Hi everyone, welcome to tonight's evening lecture from the IMECI Railway Division Northwest. Um, today we've got a presentation from Jennifer McKinney, who's Head of Infrastructure in Keolis Amy Metrolink. Um, you can see the topic of the presentation is called Keeping Greater Manchester Moving, Metrolink Engineering Challenges. Um, just to do a quick introduction to Jennifer, she joined the railway 15 years ago as a year in industry. Um, working with Grant Rail in track work, delivering track work renewals on tube lines, which was one of the London Underground Infocos back in the PPP days. Um, she's also sponsored on her engineering degree with Volker Rail and did some placements there. Then in 2011, joined Amy as a graduate engineer with a variety of roles and moved on from that to join Amy's London Underground contract in 2013 where she worked in a range of roles and then joined Metrolink in Ju July 2017 as head of infrastructure and she's responsible for infrastructure maintenance and incident response teams as well as the engineering access and planning function. Um, over to you Jen. Hi thank you for having me today. I uh, just wanted to uh, uh, give you a bit of background on Metrolink uh, and talk you through uh, a lot of the challenges from the last year introducing uh, COVID-19 measures. We've had the launch of the traffic part line. Um, we've delivered uh, a sizable uh, track renewal within the city centre at Market Street and we've tried to keep up with our uh, continuous improvements uh, uh, through uh, through a challenging year. So a bit of background. Um, for uh, um, those of you uh, that, uh, that that aren't as familiar with Metrolink, it's the uh, lightest tram network in, uh, sorry, it's the largest tram network um, in the uh, UK uh, and we're over um, 100 kilometres, two thirds of which has been built um, in the last uh, decade. Uh, we, we run through um, seven Greater Manchester boroughs, so we've got a pretty uh, extensive geographical spread uh, from old converted uh, heavy rail lines uh, from Altrincham to Bury, um, and uh, we've got a, a critical co corridor in the middle at Cornbrook, which uh, in um, our uh, our busier pre-COVID times we had over uh, fourteen uh, fourteen hundred uh, services per day. So um, hopefully that gives you a bit of bit of context or a uh, bit of context on. Uh, us, uh, Keolis and Amy took over the franchise um, in July 17. Um, we're the uh, operator maintainer and we've got a seven uh, plus three year contract. And we were the first uh, franchise to actually the, have the whole of the network uh, under our remit. It had uh, previously been, been split. Uh, and Metrolink's owned by Transport for Greater Manchester, who've got, uh, who got responsibility for the uh, renewals and enhancements and extensions so we work uh, very closely with them. Uh, for a bit of background on Keolis Amy, Keolis is uh, an international um, uh, passenger transport business and, and uh, Amy you're probably more for, familiar with as a supplier providing uh, consulting and infrastructure support. And we've got three joint ventures. So we've got uh, Metrolink, uh, London's uh, Docklands Light Rail and uh, uh, Wales and Borders, which has been uh, going through a bit of a transition in the COVID environment, but uh, we, we've still got uh, a presence there. Uh, I just thought it was a good idea to give you a bit of an overview of, of my team. I've, I've got our, uh, our maintenance team, so the track and civil, signals and telecoms, electrical, so uh, with the maintenance teams and the incident response, uh, pretty sizable team. There's, there's uh, just uh, shy of 70 of us, so we've got a smaller uh, um, access planning team as well. Um, but it's been um, a, a, a challenging, uh, a challenging year uh, uh, supporting the, uh, the the team members uh, through through the COVID challenges and keeping the network running. Uh, we uh, um, introduced quite a number of me measures in uh, March uh, as the uh, challenges of, of COVID became available. So we we switched to 
um, emergency rosters for, for the team so that we could support all of the functions and, and keep the network uh, keep the network moving um, and keeping our team safe uh, and providing um, essential maintenance and incident response. And there are a lot of challenges that we had to go through uh, to be able to, to, to make this one happen because we had team members who were shielding um, and um, we also had a number of staff as, as the whole uh, in, in industry has, has been impacted who's been in isolation so there was a lot of uh, juggling to be able to uh, make sure that we could provide the coverage uh, and support our teams to keep them safe so um, it's uh, it's been a challenge um, and it's changed a, a number of times over the last few months uh, for us to be able to uh, keep up with the uh, emergent guidance um, and the uh, the traffic part line um, was was uh, launched actually on the uh, 22nd of um, March, um, which is the latest extension. Uh, f uh, the construction was was undertaken uh, by uh, MPT, which is a, a consortium for uh, of, which is Langerock, Volcarail, and Talis, and it, it's it's adding. Um, it's adding a, a further five and a half kilometres um, to, to the network. Uh, and actually, um, those of you who are familiar with Manchester might know it's going to uh, the Trafford Shopping Centre uh, and it's uh, adding another uh, transport um, link to Old Trafford. Um, but the crucial reason we, we um, uh, operationally it went live and, and this was um, seven months ahead of the planned schedule uh, was actually goes through uh, one of Manchester, uh, sorry, it's actually Europe's largest industrial estate. So we wanted to be able to um, provide the access link to key workers who work at Kellogg's and Unilever. Uh, and it's uh, it's uh, one of the, uh, uh, it's the latest uh, step in um, uh, greater um, Manchester sort of progress to, to a London style network. Um, uh, and actually, the very next day, on the uh, 23rd of March, um, that's when um, the country went into our first uh, lockdown, uh, and um, we uh, implemented um, some uh, different timetables so that we could still uh, provide a service. Um, so, so initially going to a 12-minute uh, frequency uh, with shorter operational hours, and at this point in time, our, our patronage. Uh, dropped off to about 95% of of what it had been uh, normally in um, in April. We, we we reduced it back further to uh, a 20 minute service so that we could keep providing the essential service. Uh, and we ramped up since uh, going back to uh, not quite a pre-COVID timetable, but closer um, in August. Uh, key for us in in changing the timetable has been being able to provide the double units, which better support social distancing. So um, with a, with the latest lockdown, we've got uh, a lot less people using using the tram, but we've still got uh, we've still got the service a, a available to our uh, customers to be able to our critical customers to be able to utilise. Um, we've uh, all got used to uh, technology this year, so uh, we use uh, Microsoft Teams uh, very uh, closely, and we've um, uh, worked on um, providing uh, a lot of uh, a coronavirus related communication to help all of our engineering teams um, and, and the wider um, Metrolink business. So we've got projects and operations uh, as well with the latest guidance uh, and trying to, to monitor it very closely. Uh, it's a, a bit of a balancing act, keeping the right number of uh, resources uh, within uh, work bubbles uh, and providing uh, the tasks that, that, that we need um, Whilst, uh, whilst, whilst also, uh, whilst also being able to, to keep up with our plans. Social distancing has, uh, has, has obviously become, uh, the, the big topic. So, um, our, uh, fantastic comms team helped with, uh, putting messaging out there to keep our teams safe. Uh, that was, uh, really supportive and, um, one of the um, things that's uh, specific to to a light rail network, um, because of the the um, open um, nature of the network in the city centre, is uh, 
um, that um, members of the public can come up to um, our uh, our team members. Um, so that's been uh, that's been one of the uh, one of the reasons for for adding the messaging. Um, uh, did a big campaign to to get people to uh, stay home, uh, which uh, um, I'm sharing because this is uh, this is my uh, daughter who's who's um, five and a, a budding track engineer um, supporting, uh, and uh, um, it was uh, great to get the engagement and and, and try and uh, have the members of the uh, public uh, supporting Metrolink um, and and transport um, for Greater Manchester. Um, be able to uh, keep our teams safe and provide the service to those who, those who are key. Uh, like everyone else, we've uh, been uh, doing a, a lot of uh, a lot of extra cleaning. Um, uh, there's been lots of additional uh, additional challenges that we've uh, we've put in place. Um, and as I was mentioning about the open network, our uh, um, our security team have actually been providing um, support when we've been on the quieter uh, lockdown times uh, because um, because of it being an open network and critical tasks like point points maintenance. Um, it's to keep some of our technicians uh, safe um, where uh, um, where they're, they're a bit more exposed when there's uh, less people around and. Uh, uh, for those of you who know the likes of Piccadilly Garden, it's it's not the nicest place to be able to uh, uh, to be able to work. So we've uh, we've had a um, a great support from uh, the the wider part of the business um, as, as as the operator maintainer, which has been really get great uh, for us. Um, uh, I like um, uh, like. Um, most uh, like all of the rail industry, we've we've had to do a lot to um, work through different safe systems of works and, and risk assessments for essential maintenance um, tasks. Uh, and the pictures are of our overhead line maintenance. One of our uh, uh, key partnership um, suppliers, Podtrack, uh, undertakes this maintenance for us, and they've put a lot of protocols, uh, including restricting. Um, uh, their um, uh, OLE um, operatives to one person per uh, per mute, which has has been a real challenge because it's usually two. So this has halved our uh, productivity of a, a really uh, critical activity. Um, but uh, it's uh, absolutely um, essential to support social distancing. Um, so they've um, had uh, quite a challenge challenge on their hands um, supporting us to uh, keep up with this uh, particular activity I, I think for us uh, most things of most tasks that have been machine based have been the biggest challenge um, through this uh, we benefited um, through uh, the um, earlier months in the uh, pandemic from having longer access window um, but as we've gone back closer to closer to normal our, our nighttime access has been a bit shorter and this is uh, been challenging so uh, through uh, 2021 we're going to be uh, looking to um, looking to utilize a few more weekend possessions to try and get some of our output uh, output up um, we've uh, we've um, also um, through um, uh, through through the height of uh, the initial uh, pandemic started to to work on a key track renewal um, Back in uh, March, uh, we'd assessed um, which activities were actually sort of critical from an infrastructure maintenance perspective that we needed to undertake, so our key inspections, um, and really being um, clear on what activities um, were a top priority. Quite a few of the capital projects um, uh, ended up um, being paused for, for, for some time. Um, but we had a particular rail section in the city centre um, around uh, Market Street where we were monitoring the uh, rail condition pretty closely. Um, uh, and we prioritised this as an activity that we still needed to undertake, even with the uh, COVID restrictions. Um, due to uh, a lot of the challenges uh, and um, the high profile nature of this uh, 
uh, location, uh, it would have been a challenge on TFGM's renewal framework to be able to secure a uh, um, uh, a subcontractor, um, uh, and we'd been uh, monitoring uh, and applied a what we call a temporary approved non-compliance, so it meets the ORR's um, risk assessment criteria. There was a speed on the section uh, of five miles an hour. It, it's not very fast anyway, but it, it does. Uh, it's in a critical location, so it does slow down the network a fraction. Um, and we were doing dipenetrative testing every two weeks, uh, taking uh, additional wear measurements and, and visually inspecting, uh, inspecting daily, so we could keep a track of the condition. Um, so the uh, challenge for us um, was uh, to either uh, re renew the section or, or set, shut the first city crossing. So there are our two, two crossings through the city centre. Um, we, uh, as I mentioned, um, there was a challenge um, uh, getting um, uh, a contractor to be able to take on the work um, uh, Prior to COVID, uh, and with the um, reported additional um, timeframes on the renewals works that were being undertaken in Sheffield, we, we, we were we were advised that it would take about 30% longer. Um, so this sort of stretched what's a what's a fairly um, uh, limited uh, option option base for embedded re-railing, um, and um, we uh, as as the CAM, the operator maintainer. Um, took, took on delivering our project team took on delivering um, the renewal. So uh, some of some of my team members um, supported the uh, the delivery of the the work. That did our uh, engineering team, uh, and uh, um, it was led by our project team with our uh, um, uh, contractor Podtrack uh, taking on the work. Uh, as my maintenance teams uh, typically only do. Um, small rail breaks. It was uh, it was a new challenge um, for for us as uh, as, as Keolis Amy. Um, a lot of focus had gone in and supporting the operators, bringing uh, the Trafford Park line into operation since our franchise commenced, uh, and this was going to be one of the first um, major renewals uh, that was that had a number of challenges, and it was in the uh, in the city centre. Um, so. Um, all, all in um, our, our discussion started in March and, and the possession commenced in, in August. So we had pretty short time frames, but also a key opportunity to be able to uh, um, uh, set, uh, to be able to uh, access the network in, in, a, in a city centre location um, when um, there were a lot less uh, members of the public out and about. Um, so the um, operational part of our business uh, got to work um, quite quickly. They've been um, very, very busy this year uh, with COVID uh, changing the timetable quite a few times. And they were able to put together our operational readiness plan pretty quickly um, with the uh, amended services and uh, putting in, in, in place replacement buses and um, the various other methods. Uh, measures that are required uh, for our customers uh, to support. Um, putting out lots of uh, communication plans to let everybody know about our network and that's a, a, a map of the city centre uh, for anyone um, who, uh, who who doesn't know Manchester uh, particularly well to give you an idea of the particular location. Uh, as you can imagine, there were a lot of stakeholders that we needed to um, bring up to speed on the plan works for their short time frame. So uh, speaking with the mayor, MPs, um, uh, the, the uh, councillors, um, and there were um, numerous, uh, uh, numerous businesses in the area. Uh, it's right outside uh, Debenham's department store. Um, so we needed to uh, engage with them. Uh, there was more than um, a thousand uh, letters sent to local properties uh, with the potential for the, the noise as we were going to be uh, undertaking the works in a blockade and there's big sort of social media um, uh, comms brief to try and get uh, the, word, the word out that this was the plan. Uh, and we were uh, mindful um, as we've been uh, tracking the progress of, of COVID challenges that um, 
the a lot of the businesses had only just opened uh, at a time we were going to be um, putting uh, putting in place um, a, a blockade on the network and, and restricting access to uh, uh, certain um, footpaths that were uh, uh, right by some of the shops. Um, so it's it's been a it's been a key uh, balancing act for uh, determining the size of the work side, not to encroach more on the uh, footpath than necessary, um, uh, particularly with social distancing and capacity in mind, but also wanting to make sure that it was a sufficient work site for whether it's a quite a challenging role. And I've got, I've got a few pictures coming up, so you'll you'll see exactly what I what I mean in a minute. Um, and um, it's. Uh, um, certainly, um, there was a, a, a lot of uh, a lot of work in short space of time. So this uh, this gives you a, a picture of uh, just where the work site uh, was at Market Street on our first city crossing, and the, the other uh, uh, crossing is the the second city crossing that was uh, built more recently. Um, we uh, were uh, renewing a, just over a 50 metre uh, section of, of rail and quite complex uh, block work um, outside, outside of Debenhams. Uh, once, uh, uh, once we got um, to the start of the blockade, uh, which was in August, um, we had uh, quite a bit of work to commence sort of setting up the site uh, um, the uh, installation of a lot of uh, Harris fencing and signage for our customers, um, delivery of the the welfare facilities and our uh, travel safe offices um, so, so supported us through this project as well um, because of some of the incidents we'd had in the location with uh, the public and antisocial behaviour. Uh, crucially, because of the location, um, we um, set up uh, acoustic barriers and we were monitoring the noise. Um, we, we'd, as, as I've mentioned, we did a lot of stakeholder management, um, but it was uh, um, good to, to make sure we had uh, um, every mitigation we could in place uh, to make sure that we, we didn't uh, disturb our, our neighbours any, any, uh, any more than necessary. Um, as due to um, the amount of work that there was, we needed to work around the clock. Um, the uh, block paving um, was actually the the most significant challenge, um, although the, the, the re-railing um, was was the key requirement, uh, um, the driver from the renewal. Um, the uh, unique Yorkshire stone block work um, was actually uh, has been described as being a bit of a um, four thousand piece puzzle, which uh, needed to be um, removed with each piece being um, weighed. Uh, sorry, weighing um, eight um, kilos, uh, and uh, essentially we needed to remove it uh, and put it back in um, exactly the same uh, puzzle piece. So that was a, an immense, uh, immense challenge um, for this particular. Um, for this particular job, the whole of the city centre um, was uh, renewed in sort of circa 2008. Um, so this is the first time this particular uh, block paving was was. Uh, this is the first renewal. Um, so we've learnt uh, we've learnt a lot, as I'll, I'll mention uh, a little later um, for uh, some of the next renewals. Uh, um, as we uh, remove the block paving, uh, set about sort of. Um, uh, removing all of the, uh, um, the the rail clips and the grout, and uh, um, found encountered uh, um, some challenges with uh, with uh, concrete, um, which slowed things down uh, somewhat and caused a number of challenges. Um, there's a lot of uh, uh, work requirement for removing the rail and uh, establishing rail pits and. Um, uh, and the like, and uh, uh, and the um, uh, acoustic requirements to reduce noise, um, and reinstalling the rail um, had uh, quite a uh, quite a lot of intricacies um, uh, with the uh, tie bar um, arrangement and getting the uh, low and high rail leg in. 
um, and this just uh, gives you a bit more bit more detail on on um, some of the uh, some of the uh, tie bars um, and the like, and, and we did stray current testing as well uh, as we were installing um, installing the rail. Uh, and we've got uh, a few few uh, few more pictures there, which uh, which uh, shows you um, uh, shows you the uh, uh, vector boot uh, rectification and, and and the grout pour. Um, and giving you an idea of uh, just uh, just how much work uh, when when you say it's uh, 50, 50 odd meters, it, it doesn't uh, sound like a lot of re-railing, but uh, uh, in the context of the uh, block work around it and and the uh, intricacies, it's uh, is a pretty sizable uh, pretty sizable job. So um, we had we had a fair bit of work around the reinstatement and uh, uh, and ensuring that. Uh, um, we uh, laid the drop sheet sheets that we were uh, protect, protecting the grout and and, uh, uh, and not causing any issues to the quality of the installation, um, uh, and that gives you uh, closer to the uh, 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 final uh, pictures on the reinstatement um, and and uh, laying of laying out of the block work and the uh, second grout pour um, and the like. Um, uh, and this uh, this job was originally in uh, for a nine day blockade, uh, and we got hit with um, the uh, with, with some extreme weather right in the middle of it, uh, uh, towards towards the end of it. Uh, in in the middle, we'd we'd encountered that we had some delays to our program because of some of the intricacies, uh, and there was a greater uh, amount of concrete breakout than we. Had and then when um, the extreme weather hit and it was going to have an um, impact um, not just on the rain falling but the uh, uh, curbside drainage around and, and, and reinstating um, some of the, the, the remaining requirements uh, we ended up um, agreeing with uh, TFGM that we needed to uh, revise the program and ex extend it by a couple of days um, so that we could complete all of the works uh, because it was going to be um, uh, public um, public are going to be able to be walking on uh, the infrastructure so we need to make sure it was uh, which uh, make sure it was uh, make sure it was safe and and this is a decision um, that wouldn't have been uh, wouldn't have been possible um, a few years ago before the uh, second city crossing and that gave some key redundancy through the initial blockade and and with the uh, uh, with the extension, um, which was uh, was really valuable, so we could keep uh, keep running a service, uh, a quieter service still at that point. Uh, and this is one of the uh, the ALH in installation, and this is one of the activities that was a a, a challenge um, with it, uh, with the quality um, uh, given the uh, weather challenges. Uh, and then the last few pictures of us. Uh, the de, de, uh, demobbing the site. Um, so as our uh, our first um, uh, uh, renewal uh, in the city centre, um, the, the the first for Keolis Amy, but also the 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 first since the uh, intricate block work was installed, we've uh, uh, learnt quite a number of uh, quite a number of lessons, which I which I think are pretty key because. The entire um, city centre is going to be need to be renewed uh, in the up and coming years. Uh, and uh, as I mentioned earlier, as a, as a maintainer, we only um, uh, deal with whale breaks, so it's quite short sections. Um, so we've learned uh, quite a lot about uh, the challenges with the concrete breakout. Um, the there were some uh, issues with the asphalt quality uh, and handling of uh, of the rail and some of the, the tight confinements as we'd. Tried to keep our, our work site as as, uh, as small as possible, um, uh, and um, and then we had a couple of challenges with with uh, the weld failure rate uh, and, and adverse weather can can make that more challenging. And then the complex uh, the complex surface finish um, that was involved um, when um, uh, when reinstating uh, the puzzle piece of the block work. So. Uh, and, and this block work, because it's uh, 
uh, Manchester City Council's uh, conservation area, we'd need to have their permission uh, to be able to ch change the block work that's uh, that's uh, uh, been installed. Um, so we've uh, we've learnt a lot of uh, valuable lessons um, to be able to factor into uh, into future renewals, um, which um, uh, which is uh, which is useful. And uh, in uh, the background, uh, the maintenance teams have been continuing. Uh, to try and deliver uh, a number of our uh, improvements through through this context. So we've um, had the uh, challenges of the additional requirements because of uh, uh, COVID and the um, uh, challenges with, with uh, some of our uh, staff availability and the additional, additional measures. Uh, and we've ended up supporting a, a much more um, uh, demanding um, project in, in short timescales uh, than uh, was expected at the start of the year uh, with quite a few of the, uh, the the maintenance team sort of stepping in uh, helping out as, as as well as the uh, it, it, um, having it being a, a considerable um, uh, amount of work for our uh, uh, engineering and projects team um, when it's come to uh, maintenance planning in the background we've been uh, working on um, really making a, a step change in the way in which we uh, use um, our um, agility uh, asset management system. Uh, there's been um, a, a lot of work um, by our asset management team uh, and they are uh, currently uh, uh, working on agility mobile project um, so that we can move away from um, Using so much paper, uh, and um, they're uh, um, uh, resetting up the, the structure within the system. Uh, and I've uh, shared an example, which is from our signal and telecom team, so you can get the uh, uh, broad uh, overview of the different uh, disciplines um, in the infrastructure space. Uh, and there's been a lot of hard work from the team to move to a new regime and breaking um the uh network into uh four defined sections so that we could look uh to deliver a more um optimized uh program uh and this is uh this has been key to us uh really been make being able to make a, a a step change in um our maintenance uh compliance uh and uh, more efficiently use our our access uh windows and um We've been able to look at um, the timing of some of our key maintenance tasks so that we could uh, um, have a lighter uh, points maintenance uh, plan during the summer months, which has freed us up to be able to um, support some of the smaller renewals. So whilst the, we had the um, uh, blockade um, for a track renewal, the, uh, the signaling team uh, we were actually uh, doing some work um, to do with a, uh, a track circuit that need replacing. So um, we we always try and maximise uh, the access and then um, making sure we had uh, less demand in uh, the Christmas holidays and like that the 24/7 team um, who uh, who were uh, who worked uh, all through uh, all through Christmas. Um, uh, and uh, we've been working on developing all of our maintenance task instructions and, and creating uh, new jobs within uh, agility so that we could have more efficient planned uh, preventive maintenance schedules. Um, and it's really uh, um, it, it's really made made a step change uh, and it builds um, towards the um, improvements that my um, access and, and, and planning team uh, are working on. So um, I uh, only uh, uh, had this team uh, fall under my remit a, a year ago. Uh, so we, we've um, we had a number of uh, number of goals which have which have been uh, somewhat challenging in the COVID context, particularly with the number of very necessary reasons we've, we've changed the timetable. Um, but we've been working towards um, making a considerable change to, to the way uh, that Metrolink um, undertakes our access planning. So you see from the uh, both, uh, map I, I shared of our uh, signal and telecoms team maintenance plan, we've, we've split it into four sections. We're working um, on developing 
uh, a Metrolink rules of the route. A lot of our uh, access planning goals are based on adapting best practice from network rail. Um, having our own rules of the route is going to be a key um, change for us to actually be able to um, maximize our um, uh, white period on nighttime access window, which will be really, really key to us being able to improve our output uh, on a given night shift and, and focus on taking um, more specific um, possessions. We, we take quite like large possessions traditionally and we're looking to have uh, more targeted um, possessions on, on the different branches. This will be really key um, for our uh, overhead line team um, uh, or any uh, tasks that require isolations, uh, and it should benefit not only, uh, or it will benefit not only uh, my maintenance teams, uh, but also any any projects uh, that are being undertaken on the network uh, in, in the future, because we will be able to provide much better access. Uh, and we're also working on um, looking at our 12-month uh, 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 visualisation plans, which is uh, bringing in some good practice from, from the London Underground contract uh, I was on before this. And we've been working very closely with our um, uh, colleagues in our service delivery uh, department. So that's the operational planning team who do the tram timetables and uh, developing an integrated planning process, um, which is which is why it's um, uh, really key uh, that, um, that we uh, get to good foresight of the uh, timetables so that we can uh, um, plan further out, improve our access window and improve our maintenance compliance and efficiency. So there's some exciting changes uh, in the Metrolink uh, space. Uh, we've been working with uh, more sims who are developing our training material as well um, to, um, uh, to, to, to update it to fit with uh, some of the improved practices. Uh, so although it's been uh, challenging to achieve some of the same goals, uh, in the COVID context, um, I'm really, really pleased that we've still been able to to, to move the needle, uh, and I look forward to being able to to, to build on it and actually roll out um, rules of the route uh, in the hopefully not too distant future, uh, so that we can uh, um, so we can provide a a, a better service uh, uh, from an access perspective. Uh, we've uh, we've we've also been um, Trying to progress uh, one of our one of our other key projects, uh, we have been uh, working um, on our setting up remote condition monitoring. So, so the pictures attached uh, are of the track component where we were, we're looking to bring in uh, track uh, geometry and real uh, profile and wear measurements. Um, uh, we've uh, got some uh, similar setup for um, the overhead line so that we can uh, gain heights and stagger measurements uh, and contact wire thickness automatically. Um, the plan is that our supplier selector um, will um, be able to cover, well, it will install the devices on the same tram, uh, which will be a really key step change to being able to get a holistic picture. Um, of um, the uh, condition of our uh, infrastructure uh, and our colleagues in the uh, rolling stock engineering team have been working on the same. Uh, they've installed uh, a pantabot at uh, Cornbrook, our, um, our uh, um, key sort of central critical corridor, which uh, uh, takes an image um, of every uh, uh, pantograph that goes through. So it's been really... Uh, um, really, really key step change um, for us uh, from a from a, a data uh, collection and, and response perspective. And when we've we've had, which we we ha have had uh, a few challenges with uh, some uh, overhead line uh, recently, we we're able to more quickly determine um, whether it's a pantograph or an OLE issue, which is key. Uh, unfortunately, though, um, as I've uh, sort of mentioned, we've we've had some challenges with. COVID. So this um, particular bit of kit is from a supplier called Selectra, um, and they uh, were over um, starting uh, with some of the setup. Um, uh, they uh, set up uh, for, for wheel profile measurements uh, in our depot um, in February. Unfortunately, they're based in Italy, um, so they haven't actually been able to complete um, the uh, installation yet. 
um, and with uh, the uh, challenges um, traveling, um, it's uh, it's been a project that's been delayed. But I feel it's um, still useful to sh useful to share because it's a, a really important um, step change uh, for Keolis, uh, uh, Amy, and our approach, coupled with the uh, uh, with the changes we're making with uh, with maintenance planning and access planning um, to, to, to really uh, look at uh, uh, the improvements we can provide to Metrolink overall. So um, it's been a challenging year, um, but uh, but um, I think um, I'm really uh, I'm really proud of all my uh, infrastructure team, my, my, my colleagues in the wider CLS Amy and the partnerships we've got um, with some of our key suppliers like Podtrack and the work we've been able to do with, with TFGM to be able to keep uh, keep Greater Manchester moving. So um, uh, with that, um, uh, thank you very much. And uh, if you have any questions, um, uh, please uh, please let me know. Thanks, Jen. Sorry, but I meant to say at the start, to ask questions, you need to just type them in the text box and then we'll see them pop up here. Um, so please just start, just type them in and then I'll, I can just read them out to ask Jennifer. Um, we haven't got any questions in the box right now, Jen, but we'll just give everyone a chance to, to write them in. If we can wait for a minute or two, if that's all right. Oh, of course, of course. Um, but thanks for the presentation. It's, I can see that's a massive challenge trying to maintain and re renew a track like that in the middle of a busy city centre. And uh, I can't imagine the sort of challenges, like you said, about trying to do all that work in the middle of COVID. It's I'm sure it's been a tough time for you. Oh. I was going to say it, it, it's certainly been a challenge, but we're really lucky to have uh, um, some some great teams, and um, I think that that makes uh, that makes such a sort of significant difference. It, it's right. Lyndon here. I'll ask a question just while the, the others are coming in, Jennifer. Uh, yeah. Just in terms of your team, because you've got quite a large team there. How how much were you affected with teams having to self isolate or? Um, you know, react to COVID and the, the impact that it had on your roster and, and the, the, the uh, workforce that was available? It, it's had some really significant challenges um, at, at, at different points. So initially we switched to uh, an emergency roster uh, and um, that was uh, particularly key for our 24-7 uh, coverage, which is, which is provided by our, our signal and telecoms team with, with others on on call but we've we've had challenges um that was part of the reason why i gave you gave you the org structures to, to to show you the team but also uh to kind yeah. of give context that us and t is quite a big team but some of the other teams our, our substations team is is uh is pretty small uh and um we've got a relatively small track team with um some uh it, it's the it's the competencies that end up being a bit of a challenge. So we we've got quite a a big team overall who can support uh, uh, support sort of the general activities providing uh, the access safety. But when you get into the um, specific tasks, particularly substations, um, uh, it it it's been a challenge. Uh, we're fortunate to have some good suppliers, and I've 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 showed you a couple of examples of of projects. So we've got a lot of a lot of support from our key suppliers um, with yeah. uh, with with providing us with staff, but we have had to juggle and try and keep our teams in the bubbles. And we we had a point in the summer where um, uh, quite a lot of the electrical team uh, were isolating. So uh, my uh, maintenance manager was one of the ones uh, out on out on site doing some of the work. So there's been um, there's been a lot of people who've sort of stepped up. Uh, we we all um, that there was. Uh, people throughout the organization who, who stepped up to um help with the renewal uh, it was really key but it, 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 the challenge was uh um i think the challenges are uh, facing uh, everybody so uh it was what we could do to make it happen and there was a lot of work that was done to assess what was essential versus what was nice to do um and we've 
got a bit of a catch up program with a few activities that we'll do through uh, through 2021. Okay. Yeah, great. Well, thank you. Thanks, Jennifer. I've got a few questions now through the inbox here. So I've got one from Stuart Broadbent from Alstom. He's asking, what's the, the renewal cycle for track in the city centre? So like, how long does it last? Like, how many years does, does the track last before it has to be replaced? So that's a really good question. The last renewals um, were in um, 2008. And I, I've and, and um, my understanding is that was essentially all in um, since the uh, uh, network was opened. Um, so it ran um, for sort of 15 uh, or so years. Um, a lot of the uh, time frame is, is uh, um, somewhat dependent on the um, usage of the network. So uh, the fact that um, uh, there's been increasing timetables and uh, uh, and, and usage of the city centre means that that's a time frame that's uh, shortened. This is a little ahead of the curve, if you will, because it's a curve. Um, uh, we've introduced or pre 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 cam um, keyless only Metrolink across our cam. Um, there was the introduction of the M5000, so it's and uh, and a different wheel profile, so that has more of an impact on some of the curves uh, and and the renewal um, time frame. Um, so it's it's sort of close, a little shorter than uh, than fifteen years. I suppose it's it's like uh, twelve years now. So there's different sections, but we'll we'll have a series of of programs over the the uh, the next few years. Although we are working on uh, the um, options when it comes to um, some of our restoration welding, uh, looking at some ways of automating that. We had a few challenges for some of the existing processes, but we've had a few um, uh, discussions about what we could do with that. And one of the key reasons we're, we're really chomping at the bit to be able to get the remote condition monitoring um, is so that we mm. can take the profile measurements a lot more regularly than we need to uh, sort of as per the track standards. Um, and that will enable us to, to gain a lot more maturity about the rate of, uh, uh, of, of, uh, of defect growth and condition and be able to predict. So. Um, it's just uh, un unlucky from COVID but we're, that we are delayed, but um, we think that uh, once we are able to get it, we're going to be able to come a lot more uh, mature. Uh, the, the contract that um, I joined Metrolink uh, from was, was one of Amy's on London Underground, and I, uh, mm. I managed um, rail, rail grinding across the network and was very close to the wheel rail interface strategy there, and it, it made a big difference. Um, being able to have technology and, and utilising the analysis um, effectively. So we've been been working on um, selecting something that's appropriate for a light rail network, uh, but introducing good practice uh, to to uh, to um, Metrolink. Great, thanks. I've got another question here from John Evans at Alstom. He's asking about condition monitoring of um, the overhead line. Um, mm -hmm. You've mentioned. Pantobot measurement system. Is that something you're familiar with? Uh, yes. So Pantobot is the system that our rolling, my rolling stock colleagues have set up. So um, we've got it in Cornbrook um, on our, our critical corridor in the centre of the network, and that tracks. I think it's every 90 minutes it gets eyes on uh, each of our pantographs, uh, and hmm. it's still being commissioned at the moment. Um, uh, so we we're uh, working out a few things, but it's it, it's tracking any any chips which um, it, or any issues that it might detect uh, with the uh, pantographs, and and that's enabling um, our uh, our um, rolling stock engineering colleagues to um, uh, uh, identify if any trams need to be brought out of service, and um, on the overhead line side it's the equipment that's electro due to be installing for us so unfortunately that's also um delayed um but it's going to um help us to track the heights and staggers and the contact wire uh, we've also got um uh, ride quality in there what i'm really excited about is the fact that it'll all be on one one tram uh, and being able to get a holistic understanding of the infrastructure movement is going to be uh, a real uh, a, a real uh, step change for us right and that's a like an in-service tram like a normal passenger tram is it 
yes yes it, it's uh, it's going to be um it's going to be set up on on um in service tram the equipment will be installed um on a couple of trams um so that we can uh, move it to another if uh, um mm. if those who who might be familiar with network uh, with with the network uh, might know that we have a number of um, road traffic collisions um so just to, just in case that happens to the tram um we've we've got we'll have it on a second as well Fingers crossed, not there. Yeah. Um, got a question here from Sam Seabrook at Mott McDonald's. He's asking if there's any new technologies that might allow speed or capacity improvements. And um, you must be familiar with the network. He's mentioning Market Street mm -hmm. and is it the tight rails and concrete slab track. Is there anything particular to that sort of track you think that might allow improvements in future? Um, I think that that's something um, that uh, we can look at in terms of the design of the network uh, and the uh, particular um, uh, design that's uh, selected. Uh, I think that uh, the the uh, tight curves are probably the kind of key key consideration. There's only really so fast that you're able to go in the city centre though because of um, how open, how much of an open network it is though uh, with with passengers uh all, all around that's that's been a, a key learning curve for this uh londoner as I've, I've got used to not being down tunnel sections and having um the open mm. network um I, I think it's a key question which will which we'll have as as we um uh raise um um and, and go over renewals with, with tfgm as to as to what they'd like to uh like to do um whether uh, um whether we can make significant changes to to the design without taking the whole of the city center out is is uh, is a, a probably the key question to answer um so uh, sorry that's not not a not, not an answer but there's there's certainly uh, we, we there's certainly some sort of considerations and some factors in there um got another question from Andy Thompson from CRRC he's asking about the um like how often you have to remove track again and he's sort of saying is there any link because you've got quite a low speed mm -hmm. does the fact that you're only going five miles an hour in those central areas do you think that might extend track life or he's asking is it does the slow speed make track last longer or if there's any link there the, the when we've reduced the speed that's more of a, a safety consideration if, if we've got a um in the maintenance sort of side of things if we've got a rail break that we're we're monitoring um in, in terms of the the life of the rail there are, are there are a number of uh, there are a number of factors so the the number of uh, the, the timetable that we run and the number of services have, have an impact um there's uh, certainly considerations in terms of the wheel rail interface uh, and um, what what we what we do so that the the tram profile may, uh, makes the uh, um, makes an impact as well. Um, it's all about trying to find the optimal life of of the asset, uh, and we're looking at uh, uh, at restoration um, options options as well. Uh, there have been a few challenges um, with uh, with that, but. Uh, um, at, um, Amy are, uh, are supporting a project where there's um, some option for it to for automated uh, um, it, um, uh, welding welding uh, to to repair the weld, mm. but that's 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 still in development. And we're always looking at how we can improve our technology, um, uh, ultrasonic testing um, regime, um, which is really really um, effective. Lost Jennifer, are you there, Gareth? Hi. Hi, uh, yeah, I can still hear Jennifer. I'm here as well. Hi, can you can you hear me? Okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, I was just going to say, uh, from an ultrasonic testing perspective, it works really well. Uh, on on um uh on on our more standard rail sections and in, in embedded um it, for embedded yeah. rail, it's it's not quite as easy to pick up um the uh, defects. I, I've I've learned through. Uh, the Keolis side side of our um, um, of our franchise working with their centre of excellence that, that the French networks don't actually ultrasonically test. We've been looking at phase array technology 
um, our, our, our engineering team, I can't take credit, uh, with UK Tram. Um, and we used that on the underground um, to uh, assess some of the flashback welds where we, we, we had uh, uh, um, had uh, a, a ser series of breaks. There was a, a, a batch that, that ran um, in, I think it's 2007 that was, that was uh, uh, had a number of uh, issues with it. So um, we're looking at how, if we can utilize that so that we can have earlier detection uh, and mitigation. So it's, uh, it, it's really, uh, there's, there's a lot of variables um the challenge for for our engineering team um is it's best assessing the variables so that we can look at uh prediction of uh of pr prediction of life yeah and i guess when you've got a lot of curves going slow around a curve doesn't mean that you wear that curve away any slower does it no um and just the other thing, is your track system then quite similar to other networks, tram networks around Europe, do you know? Um, there are uh, um, s similarities. Um, Keolis' Centre of uh, Excellence um, ha have been doing a lot to um, co uh, connect us with the other networks, um, but um, it, 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 it depends on um, it depends on the particular um, asset as to, as to which network it's it's similar with um, with with and we've got the joint ventures in the UK and and a lot of my um, former uh, colleagues from the underground are either are, are uh, Docklands Light Rail now or as quite a contingent mm. in Wales so we're, we're always uh, looking at options to to work collaboratively where we've got similar infrastructure. And UK Tram have got quite a, um, a, a, a trying to, to be more active to look at how they can uh, support us uh, um, with where with where we've got uh, similarities of working together. Great, I've got another kind of connected question from Stuart Broadbent again. And he's asking, if, as far as you're aware, do other tram systems have a similar kind of track life on their fifty centre network? Um, it, it uh, I, I, again a lot of it comes down to um, the the usage of the asset, um, but that is one of the things that um, the the Keolis uh, benchmarking reviews is, is mm. the test be because of the design of the uh, Metrolink's network um, with the um, uh, sort of critical section. So you've got Cornbrook to to the ECF that that's just just um, uh, just just one route and then uh, then obviously the the first and the second city crossing through the city centre um, but it but all of the services from the branch line so for three less there's a lot of traffic but at Cornbrook um, there's uh, at least in a pre-COVID timetable uh, there was there was up to um, 1400 services so uh, the answer is, uh, is, is is no not necessarily it just it kind of depends on on the usage and different countries have different standards um and uh, at uh, d a different track standards um and uh different um inspection regimes and they use different technology right thank you um got another connected question from lee kinsey at alstom uh, about cornbrook section so you mentioned that's there's a lot of trams going through there and that seems to be quite a kind of funnel point um, and is that getting close to the sort of physical capacity of the amount of trams that you can get through there? And is there any plans to change the layout there to increase capacity through that section? So, so um, I, I would say yes. I, I think our, uh, our head of network operations would, would say from from the management from from uh, their, from our control centre that it's, it's pretty close to. Uh, uh, capacity when when we get back to um, a, a proper pre pre COVID um, yeah. timetable. Um, as part of our uh, Metrolink uh, capacity improvement project, we, we've got uh, uh, 27 additional trams. So we, we have the first one uh, uh, delivered um, in December. There are studies on the uh, power capacity, um, but in terms of adding an alternative route. Uh, that, that's a, a really a, a TFGM uh, question in, in terms of if they'd, they'd look at adding uh, a, an, an additional section uh, there. I think it's quite a challenging location for that, though. Um, so I don't think it's 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 not one that I'm uh, I, I, I can 
uh, remember off the top of my head as, as, as being that easy to achieve. <laughs> Probably not in the time right. frame of our, our franchise. Yeah. How long is your franchise? Um, so we've got uh, seven uh, plus three years, and we started in July yeah. uh, 2017. So uh, it's uh, it's been a busy first uh, uh, three and a half years. Huh. Yeah. Great. Thank you. I think we're going to have to stop the questions there. There were a couple I'm afraid we didn't get time to answer. Um, I'm just going to invite Lyndon to do the vote. Thanks now. Hopefully, Lyndon's still there. Uh, yeah, have yeah. A problem. Can you hear me? Right. Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Gareth. And uh, thank you, uh, Jennifer. <clears throat> yeah, it's been um, a bit of a, uh, a potted history of what's gone on in the last year for the for the Metrolink. We've had various talks over the years. Um, giving us the regular updates as the network has expanded and uh, grown to meet the needs of the uh, the greater Manchester public. Um, and I think Jennifer's given us this this last year, we've, we've started with COVID, which is an obvious topic, uh, looked into uh, some of the track, uh, key track renewal that was done, and then some lessons learned and some innovation technologies. So, yeah, starting with COVID, um, the well... Um, the sort of Trafford Park line uh, sort of opening is an unfortunate coincidence of it uh, opening on the 22nd and then 23rd we go into this first lockdown. But uh, nevertheless, an important milestone in the achievements of uh, of, of the Metrolink uh, to get the Trafford Park line opened and get those workers into that industrial network uh, in, in Manchester and to the and to the shops. So it will be it'll all be there ready for the future when we. We uh, get back to a sort of normal life, um, and then yeah, what was interesting again the the reaction to the COVID, keeping the network moving, um, introducing emergency rosters, doing more cleaning that was required, um, and then taking some essential maintenance opportunities, and just managing the the sort of chaos that has descended on a a lot of companies because of the COVID, and trying to. Uh, you know, rise to the occasion and and uh, and keep the keep the network going. Um, and obviously, looking at the essential services after the first lockdown, and then August was a was a more return to uh, double unit running, so they could meet the COVID restrictions. Jennifer then went on to talk about the uh, track renewal program in the Market Street, uh, which was. Uh, a large project uh, for Keolis because previously only having done smaller scale track repairs, this was an opportunity to do um, a bigger a bigger repair option around Market Street. Um, and some of the interesting points that came out of it was customer communication, uh, wanting to be a good neighbour, given the around the clock work that was going to be happening and the um, sort of uh, noise and disruption that that would be causing. Uh, and one of the key challenges I, uh, that she explained was this block work and the jigsaw. I think we'll, we'll all remember that, uh, trying to get all this, uh, all this paving back into position so the no public can actually trip over it, so it's nice and flat um, and even. So that was an interesting um, uh, sort of civil engineering project um, to renew those rails. And then uh, Jennifer talked about the lessons learned from that, um, you know, this, the maintenance planning improvements. Um, talked about splitting the network into four areas um, and defining the signalling and telecoms teams um, and then accessing planning and learning from network rail about the rules of the route as well. So again, um, every cloud has a silver lining and, and some good lessons learned come out of that. Um, Jennifer then went on to uh, show us some innovation technologies for looking at track geometry, wear profile, and introducing a, a camera, a laser mounted system onto one of the trams, similar to what they do for the overhead line. Um, and then we had a discussion about the Panto bot, an interesting terminology. That's another new one, Panto bot at Cornbrook that monitors the OHL and collects the data. And I think some of these, um, some of these innovative technologies really do enhance the way in which maintenance can be done on the network. and. 
uh, increase the resilience of the network, you know, because only a few years ago, I think Metrolink was in um, maybe four or five years ago, there was uh, quite a few instances of old red line issues and, and of the such, um, and that was not getting in, uh, getting a very good uh, press uh, in, in Manchester. But with this technology, you know, that should increase the resilience and, and focus the maintenance activities to give them um, more effective and uh, cost effective engineering. So I think um, just to quote Jennifer there, it's been a challenging year, but um, proud of uh, Keolis, CAM and the supplier relationship, which uh, which is very important because you can't run a network such as Metrolink without the uh, great support of your suppliers and uh, and pulling together as a team. So um, in, in, if we were in our auditorium, we'd uh, give you the customary um, uh, thank you uh, of a round of applause, but uh, we haven't got any auditorium. So we'll just give you a thank you very much, Jennifer, um, what, for, for a wonderful talk and another update in the Metrolink uh, chapter and story uh, for Greater Manchester. Thank you. Thank you for having me. I'll just go on Thank to you. talk about. Yep, I'll just give you the update for the uh, for the people on the uh, on the workcast for the next meeting before you before you close off, um, Gareth. The next meeting is on the 9th of February, uh, and again uh, it will be a, a workcast uh, 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 platform, and the invite uh, to register will be out soon on the IMACI website. Um, we have. Change the change from the published program of the class 390 refurbishment. The the talk on the 9th of February will be about the class 999 hydro nine, class 799 hydro flex project. Mr. Ralph Swaney of Porterbrook and Dr. Stuart Hillmanson of University of Birmingham will be giving us a, a talk on the engineering uh, of what's gone into the hydro flex project, and then. After that, in March, I'll give you a, a preview. Um, in Mar on the 9th of March, we have our Future of Rail competition, which is open to participants um, who would like to enter into that competition. And we are looking for candidates and participants who have a, an interesting uh, presentation to enter into that competition. Uh, so if anyone has, uh, can put any uh, information out, if anyone is interested, or you know of anyone who's interested in your business, then please uh, do not hesitate to contact the uh, myself or the centre uh, uh, chairman with those details. So uh, that's all from me. I just wish you all a safe journey home and uh, I'll hand, up, hand back over to Gareth. Thanks, Lyndon. Yeah, hope to, well, not see you, but hope you can all join those next two events we mentioned and really encourage any young engineers that are interested to look into the future of rail presentation competition and uh, just look out for more details about that and I'll just close the event now thanks everyone for attending today